All right, you ready? <clears throat> I'm ready. <clears throat> Wait. Hey, Susan? What's going on, Pearl Jam nerds? You are listening to Single Podcast Theory. I'm Brad Lyons. And I am Brad Blazek. What's up? <laughs> What's going on, man? <laughs> Smell that? Smells like episode yeah. 114 <laughs> yeah. versus 41616 in Greenville, South Carolina. Good old SC. That's right. It's the verse. How do you say? Do you know where this was held? The arena. Oh, actually, I don't know. I didn't look. Oh, Bon Secours Wellness Arena. Okay. I don't even know what that is. I don't either. Bon Secours Wellness. Well, now that we covered that, uh, if you, it's your first time <laughs> listening to the show, we are an all Pearl Jam podcast. Uh, we are not authorities. We are not. We do not know everything about Pearl Jam. We just fucking love this band, and uh, love having a conversation with the listeners, the other fellow Pearl Jam nerds that uh, listen to this show and write us emails that we love. So, if you want to email us, you can email singlepodcasttheory at gmail dot com. Say hey on social media, uh, all that good stuff. So that's who we are. But we have been doing this for a bit now, and so we do go off on some tangents every once in a while. You have to forgive us. Because sometimes, for Brad and I, this is the only time we, we might get to talk in a week. So mm-hmm. you have to... Um, but lucky for l- lucky for the Pearl Jam loving audience, we just talked for two hours about everything but Pearl Jam. So Yeah, we, I think we had some stuff to get out of our systems. Yeah, I think so. We just covered yeah. a lot of ground. Oh, you know what? You know what it was? What? It was the extra hour that we gained last night that allowed us to talk. Oh, my God. Did so that long. happen last night? <laughs> you don't even know, dude? Dude, yes. I, see, people Fucking think that I'm change. like, and I don't mean listeners of this show, but I think people mm, that know me just, don't yeah. really think that I'm... As busy as I sound like I am, mm-hmm. but dude, mm-hmm. straight up, I've been such a hole, not a bad one, <laughs> just like <laughs> super busy and probably yeah. I've overextended myself in certain areas that no idea that we just had daylight savings. Yeah. Do you realize it's only, it's not even six o'clock yet? Do you you're, you're in realize? Your head, <laughs> You have the most beautiful blazy face. <laughs> Do you realize that was my slash my country slash lounge version mm. of the Flaming Lips? Mm. I saw them totally once. unnecessary. You did? I saw them open for Candlebox in 1994. Ooh, old school shit. Yeah, man. She don't wow. use jelly. Yeah, dude. Remember that song? Oh, yeah. I remember when Ben Folds 5 used to cover that song. Oh, really? I never heard that. Yeah. Um, uh, what's, so, what's been going on okay. with you? Uh, nothing, really. Wait, did I just derail you from something? No, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get to it. Okay. But how have you been? <laughs> Busy. <laughs> Busy? But all good. I mean, again, it's like all good things. It's just... Yeah. Um, I've given up on the fact that no matter how much I do or do not, uh, stay on top of my schedule, which I'm just kind of bad at. And I've just kind of had to accept that, you know what I'm saying? And just do the best I can. Uh, but it's all good things. My head would explode if, yeah. If what? If, if I had to be on a schedule like you. What do you mean? Like I, 
just like you're, you, I, I mean, you're just like not all over have the place a schedule. Yeah, with, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't, man, I would have to come up with a schedule, like write down a schedule. Yeah, like I in my try, phone. man. I really do try. And I, but at the same time, it's just everything with what I do is so fluid. You know what I mean? As far as that's, that's what I mean. I can't. Every day is completely different, which is yeah, great. I fuck. love that. But then it gets to a point it, where well, it, as much as I hate lows and I hate the schedule, you know, because the, they just changed my schedule. I tell, I've told you about it. Right, right. When I moved to this new store, they changed my schedule and it's different. But it's still a kind of set schedule. It just rotates where the last 10 years I was off Sunday, Monday, every week, no matter what. Right. Uh, but like with you – with like you don't have to get up well i don't know i don't know if you get up at a certain time every day but no that's the problem too is that it's like (sighs) i don't know it just ends up so i've had to try and protect my sleep as much as possible and and i do this terrible thing that doesn't make any sense when you kind of say it out loud but um and it also runs the risk of Explaining it also runs the risk of sounding uh, ungrateful or bitchy, which is mm-hmm. not at all how I feel. Uh, but well, as long as I've known you, what you those two words describe you to a T. Yeah, fair enough. Un- ungrateful and bitchy. <laughs> but go on. Um, try, like try. it's it. Like I get. I get to make music like every right. day and if i'm not making music i'm making a radio show or a podcast and if i'm not doing that i get to hang out with my kid and yeah. i as much as i'd like to see a lot of them more uh i still do have a lot of great friends you know what i mean yeah um that are yeah. also busy and doing things and that's just dude you the phase you of life stage. right now stage you were on stage with some of your friends just two nights ago. Yeah. So all that is like I is not lost on me how fucking just yeah. uh you know, fortunate I am. And mm-hmm. uh but there is also you also have to live a life and when you live in a town like Birmingham, Alabama, um my schedule and the way I live my life is very I mean, I'm not the only one in Birmingham. I don't mean that, but uh, I have one foot in in a very kind of like <laughs> domestic, uh, you know, parenting, trying to be as much as I fuck it up all the time, trying to be a really good parent <laughs> and, yeah. um, you know, and be present for all that. But then the rest of my life and what I'm passionate about, which also gets to be how I make income, even though that's like an ebb and flow for sure. That's the hard part is like really inconsistent income is hard to get Mm. used to. And most people would lose their goddamn mind. And I would too if I didn't have something that was a passion and that I was also good at and could make money at. Right. Like, yeah, I'll. It's worth it to me to have to learn how to deal with that kind of right. up and down, yeah. uh, l- the security that it does not afford you. You know what I mean? Because it yeah. really with, – well, with, with that kind of stuff, it is feast or famine. You're To be yeah. in the middle like me is, I think, really rare because once people – people that go into what I do thinking they're going to make it, and that's what it's really about. And everyone goes through that phase. Uh, I, I'm not exempt from that. Uh, but I'm also a lot older now and more experienced. And I've realized, like, no, this is just what I do. Like, apart from the egocentric part of it that exists for all of us, which I think is also can be very healthy if it's in check. Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't – it's hard to juggle both you you've got two lives going on is what i'm saying and it's hard to mm-hmm. juggle it's hard to make it all fit into the same <laughs> into my life you know what i'm saying yeah so yeah. it just ends up with like not a lot of sleep and learning how to grab it when i can you know what i mean and not feel bad yeah. about it not feel bad for sleeping yeah. cuz i have that other side too where 
I just don't want to not be doing anything. I don't. Right. I don't like. Yeah. I'm having to learn how to like chill out and not feel bad about resting or watching The Good Place. Right. Like, mm -hmm. right. No, don't feel bad for vegging out for an hour at night and watching The Good Place. Yeah. And laughing at something light and dumb and non consequential. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Like learning how to do that shit's been real weird. Because where I used to live, we all did the same shit. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we all could get up at ten o'clock in the morning on a, on a work day and yeah. go get margaritas for lunch. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that was my I mean, whole adult life. Exact, yeah. Exactly. That's all I'm saying is you is yeah. you don't. And that's not a bad thing. I just mean it makes things a kind of stressful. And I'm I'm having to learn how to not give a fuck in a mm -hmm. good way. So you're learning to fly. Learning to fly. <laughs> Motherfucking don't got no wings. That's my little edit there. Right. So I'm yeah. not going to use his name. Then I'm sorry. I'm the tangent guy today. Yeah. How about that? Uh, yeah, you are. You are. You are chatty Kathy today. Definitely. Well, I'll tell you what. Piggyback off that I last conversation. You know why? Because hmm. yeah, I played for my friend Matthew Matthew Mayfield that's been on the show Friday night. Uh, this is Sunday as we are living and breathing and talking right now. Uh, mm -hmm. and Friday night, that show, I don't know if you've ever gone through these kind of periods, but it's very normal for what I was just describing as my life. Friday night, that show is kind of like, I just have to get that show done. And not like, I was excited about playing all that, but mm -hmm. everything's so jam-packed, and I know that Friday morning, Aiden and Leslie are taking their trip to Disney, I'm going to be in the house by myself for eight days, and I'm only on day two, and I'm all right right now, but I imagine by tomorrow, fun time for me is going to be over, and I'm going to be like, get the fuck back home, because I'm lonely, <laughs> and I want to cuddle on the couch with Aiden and watch dumb videos. Right. Right? That's the other sad thing about actually loving your kid. Is that yeah. you think, oh, my God, I'm going to be alone for nine days. And you get so excited. Mm. And then two days yeah. in, you're like, fuck this forever. Yeah. I want him back yeah. now. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, but Friday night was like the last thing. I had all these deadlines trying to, oh, you know, totaled my car. That's been a fucking mm -hmm. nightmare. I just mm -hmm. got, finally got a new car yesterday. I haven't even had it, tw well, Barely over twenty four hours. Um, oh, they you so didn't I get slept. your car fixed? You no, they totaled. It was back. totaled. Oh, it's totaled. But I got a it lot didn't of look money that for bad. it. Yeah, but yeah. I got a lot of money. Those things I didn't yeah. think about how well they hold their resale value. It was a uh, mm -hmm. Toyota Highlander. Anyway, yeah. So it's a huge pain in the ass. But I think actually, mm -hmm. since no one got hurt or anything, at least on my end, yeah. I kind of came out on top. Yeah. Hey. Um, because now I'm officially the token Tesla? Uh, Tesla? Did you get a Tesla? I wish, dude. I'm working my <laughs> way up. I just got a 2018 Prius. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Take that, bitches. Fucking tree hugger. I'm a fucking tree hugger, moral <laughs> superiority, just mm. oozing out of my pores. No, I don't feel that way at all, but I do yeah. feel a little bit better. Man, driving around a Prius with your Starbucks. I know, dude. I'm just like, <laughs> all I need to do is go vegan. In the in the most liberal city in the South. Exactly. You <laughs> are you starting to get a picture of what my life is like day to day? <laughs> yes. Right? I am. Yeah. It's not fun sometimes, man. <sighs> I'm such a victim. Yeah, dude. You know? We both are. I know. I know. Anyway, um, <laughs> There was a yeah. I am tangent city today. I apologize. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what was I originally trying to? The, the some very simple point I was trying to make. Mm. I don't remember. But life is life is good. Life is good, man. It's just been busy, complicated. Yeah. I wish that you know 
there it was possible to kind of even it all out a little bit more, but right. I got sleep, man. That that's the big mm-hmm. key. I got to sleep in. <laughs> that's yesterday and today. Two days in uh, a row. Talk I got about to sleeping sleep in. in. Fucking. So we had a time change, right? This, right. You that you well, just I, found out about just, just now, out, but yeah. I knew about it. I've known about it all week, dreading it. And I had to work today, and so. Every whenever I go in on Sundays, usually I go in at six, but Sundays we go in at seven. I get there at like ten till seven. Nobody's fucking there, and I'm like, "What the fuck? Like nobody? How is there nobody here?" And then I'm like doing the math in my head with the time change, and I'm like, "No, if if, if the time change, if I fucked up the time change, that means I would be late. Like if it's if I didn't change the clocks, it's already like eight o'clock." not seven. So I'm all freaked out. Anyway, long story short, because it's fall, the store doesn't open till nine. So we don't have to come in until eight on Sundays. So I was uh, like an hour and 10 minutes early to work this morning. You were an hour and 10 minutes late? Early. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Early. Ooh. Yeah. That's as bad as being late. I was so mad. So mad because there's nobody there. I can't, I can't go in and clock in early. I just have to sit there. Yeah, ugh, I hate that. Yeah, I was so, so frustrated, and I wasn't even supposed to work today, but I needed to take off a day during the week, so I switched. The life of a Lowe's driver. Mm, yeah, but I got off pretty early. We've been, we've been real slow the last couple weeks. That's good. So. Anyway, that's it. I'll stop now. Okay. <laughs> God, please do. I'm just kidding. Did you ever see the Twilight Zone like in the 80s? I think it was 85, 86. They like rebooted it. Uh, I'm sh- uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the original. Maybe I, th- I watched some I think of they it. had one with Bruce Willis where he answered the phone and it was like himself calling from work. I don't remember that. N- well, this other one was an Elvis one, and it was an Elvis impersonator, like in modern modern times. And he gets in a car wreck, and he wakes up, and it's like I don't know, nineteen fifty five, whatever Elvis when before Elvis was famous. Yeah, he like wakes up in Memphis, like at a coffee shop with Elvis. All right, and he befriends him because it's fucking Elvis, and this dude's an Elvis impersonator, and then. It's a good he band like name. No, it's fucking Elvis. <laughs> it's you gonna go see Elvis fucking Elvis is? tonight? <laughs> yeah, the fucking Elvises. <laughs> so I'm that you down. know, Elvis was like super religious. This guy, the Elvis impersonator, starts telling him shit about the future and how he's like gonna help him. And Elvis thinks he's like a a, a witch, and they get in a fight, and he accidentally kills the real Elvis, and then. He becomes Elvis. Like he becomes the world's Elvis. Yeah. And they flash forward to like modern day and he's still alive. Like he didn't turn into like drug addled fat Elvis. Interesting. I I, I'm not being a dick, coolest, but you, <laughs> we, did you just yeah. want to tell that story? Well, I've, I have, or is that tied into that, something that I'm not getting? I, I just found out yesterday. Right. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you three guesses. Who oh, wrote God. that episode? Because I just found this out yesterday, and I I remember watching this when I was a kid, thinking it was, you know, it was so cool. But I found out who wrote it yesterday. Who? George R. R. Martin. Oh, really? Yeah. That's funny. And I was just like, that's fucking crazy. I know that's Whoa. a boring story, but yeah, man. Whoa. <laughs> it really kind I don't of think we can do out. I can't do a show today after that. I'm yeah. gonna have to sit Is your really mind? We should just watch that we should watch that episode and do like commentary. That that will be we should like pick out if we can see any like game of like hints of what was to come on Game of Thrones. Right. Or or you know what I have an idea? Yeah, tell me. Um, I have an idea. Maybe 
we could do some emails from the people that put themselves to through the show. this. That'd be good. I, you know, I, I've been thinking all week. I can't wait to get this to this episode and really try and do like an all Pearl Jam intro part. Well, we blew that. <laughs> that did yes. not happen. I ch- just but I now. want people to know. I want people to know that I I did think about it and I did try. And then Brad Lyons went off on fucking. Well, you might want to let me in on the plan, city. motherfucker. Well, but I, the thing is, 113 episodes, you always are like trying to to calm me down. I know, but you know what I just realized? So I didn't need to let you know about the plan. Yeah. You know what I just realized? Uh, what? Why I sound like I might have just done a fat Sam Kennison line of Coke uh, <laughs> is because I'm drinking Red, Red Bull. Bull right now, and I haven't had yeah. one of these in, like, very long time. Yeah. So I'm a that little was the last cracked thing you, out. Yeah. That was, like, the last thing you did before we started. You're yeah, like, I was like, like, let me go, go get, get a Red drink because we've been you know talking why? for two hours. You know why? Why? Not because I went to the fucking store and got it, because these lazy college kids, which I get it, whatever, uh, they're the reps that are supposed to go around to businesses and like, here's some free samples or whatever. They know that we have a mini fridge because we're a studio Mm. and they just walk in and dump their whole bag in our fridge and bolt. And then they don't have to go anywhere else the rest of the day because they've given out their whole bag and they can go smoke weed and go play pool down at the pool hall. (laughs) Because mm, that's what kids do these days, right? Smoke weed and go to the pool hall. Y- yes, I don't know yes. where that came they play, from. They play stickball. So, anyway, <laughs> emails. Kick, kick the can. Remember, kick the can. Nope. Are you serious? What do you mean, kick the can? That was like a children's game. Like we we play kick the can when we were kids out in the street. Is this pre oh, or post Lyons. depression era? <laughs> All we oh, had was pre, a can, and we yeah, kicked it. Stick, and we're stick. lucky to have that can, <laughs> God damn it! Because we knew the value of a can. You laugh. That was my life. Oh, that was. Hands and a monocle, oh. most valuable I, things you I, could have. Yeah, and a stick, a good, a good, a stick. good stick. That's what you want. You want a good can to kick that's not going to dent too much. You know, mm. maybe something that was yeah. not going to rust. You want a good stick and a good monocle. That's how you were a gentleman in the nineteen twenties, thirties. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Emails. Who's starting off? I will start off. Do it. Speaking of, well, no. Baba Baggins <laughs> writes in. Um, his actually, he's, he's actually name is his name is Tyler. Yeah. Hola, dos brados. I was waiting to write in until I was all caught up. However, I'm currently on episode forty. And you guys touched on you touched upon the topic of young listeners and fans. I don't know how big you guys have become, nor will I hear my email anytime soon. But I just wanted to inform you that you have a 15 year old listening. Hell yeah! Uh, I figured, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I figured you guys would be interested to know this. Uh, also, just in case you're wondering, I did grow up listening to Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Green Day. Hell yeah! But recently, my old man has been listening to country stuff like Jack Johnson, so I am not, uh, so I'm not a fan by proxy. Unfortunately, I have not seen any shows since I started listening, uh, since I started seriously listening in late 2018 after the latest shows. I want to thank you guys also for being so fucking awesome and making this show about the soundtrack of my life. Also, I would like to pose a question to the other listeners. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you find yourselves listening to only Pearl Jam like me? I think the last time I listened to something else was like two months ago. Anyhow, I just figured you guys would like to know. Hope to catch up soon. P.S. What is the second sound clip of the Pearl Jam Storytellers intro? 
the one where pissed off Eddie <laughs> says, uh, yeah, he said swoon. Uh, the one where pissed off Eddie says, we just have friends up here listening to stories. Uh, that's from, um, that is from is that from, uh, isn't that a European show? Yeah. It's Milan 92. Okay. That was one of the first bootlegs that I had. Me too. God, back when I was uh, Tyler's age. Yep, exactly. <laughs> 15, 16. Yep. Um, I don't know if you can play a little bit of that, or do we have to? Uh, I just have like to, edit it, edit I, it in. I might be able to find it. But uh, anyway, so yeah, this. But this is cool. I mean, 15 years old, just discovered Pearl Jam last year. I know. And he started started listening to us. I, I mean, I love I love that. Me too. Sorry for all the bad language, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Hope your parents don't get mad. But it makes me super happy to uh, to hear from some of the the younger audience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just kind of yeah. reminds you that they are still relevant. I think, even if they're not like part oh, yeah. of you know, quote unquote, uh, popular culture or whatever you want to call that um, yeah i don't know but they still are selling out huge shows yeah now jack johnson are you do you know who that is yeah is he country uh i wouldn't consider him country but i get what he's saying i mean it's very um i don't think i know who that is what is he saying like does he have any big big hits oh yeah I'm not being a smart ass. Sometimes I can't tell. Are you yeah. being serious or are you joking with me? Just because I'm he's had 100%. a lot of hits. Uh, a lot. <laughs> I, I, and the name is he's had like a lot of success vaguely, with like movie I, scoring, yeah, yeah, kids' not, movies. And, <laughs> I'm not being an ass. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, what did you say? I'm not being. No, I, I, the name sounds familiar, but I feel like he's like like Jason Mraz type guy. Uh that kind of, uh, that kind of the, the, yes. I mean, he's from Wait, Hawaii. He with, he's a he, surfer. He's very he's West with Coast, Eddie, hasn't he? Oh yeah, I, I think they're buds. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm super. Again, not being a dick, I'm super shocked that you aren't really kind of familiar with. I think I don't if think I you would like him. him I'd... Right, but <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's not no, your. Bag. I'd rather listen to. Uh... I'd rather listen to Soundgarden Green Day. With but I mean, Tyler. for what he does, he's which is not my bag either. But he's, I mean, he's really good at what he does. You know, you, I mean, he yeah. really knows. I think he, I don't know. There's a, there is a craft to what he does. He understands yeah. what he does, and he does it well. You know what I mean? I bet he doesn't wear shoes, right? He's one of those very, guys. very possible. Yeah. Oh God. He's probably no, a flip flops only guy. Oh, that's even worse. Maybe, maybe Flip Crocs flops. when he's at his own house. House, you know what I mean? Like maybe not. I, he's not a Crocs Speaking. in public, public guy, but maybe a Crocs at the house. Speaking of memes, I saw one, and it's a guy like it's 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 like a guy like being like God, and he's looking down, and it says like, "You give them free will, and they choose to wear Crocs." You can't really beat that logic. <laughs> A lot of truth being spit right there. <laughs> I mean, some memes are just so honest. Yeah, I mean, there's there. I mean, they. It's like drinking from a fucking fire hose. There's it's one of those things where there's way too much of it. But you yeah. know, at the end of the day, but there's, there's some, some that really just smart fucking shit. Hit the bullseye. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Um, but um, Pearl Jam. Do you listen to Pearl Jam? Like all the time, and only no. I know you don't. No, right? no, 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 no. But they are my. I mean, part of them being one of my favorite bands is they are my kind of reset. Like when I'm, I know I can always yeah. go to it, right? Because yeah, I do. Yeah. I, you know, everyone's a different type of music listener and has different reasons. But I like knowing what's going on to a certain extent not like top 40 radio mm -hmm. going on but i yeah. do try yeah. and find new things to listen to and um because i enjoy it but when i get when i get because i'm i obsess right so 
like when I find something new yeah. or a new record comes out, I kind mm-hmm. of just focus in on that. On that. And that's yeah. all I listen to. Yeah. So like the last one was the Brittany Howard record, I think, is the last one I wore out. And then once I get to where I'm like, oh, it's like you've had too much sugar or something. Or you're like, I just can't do yeah. it anymore. Um, yeah. Then I'll be like, okay, I'm putting on, you know, I'm putting on verses. Or I'm putting on yeah. binaural or what, whatever it's, it is. Yeah. And that's well, what gets me. Well, the cool thing me. with them is there's, you know, 10 different albums. So there's a few different eras. Sure. Which kind of translates to there's different moods, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Pearl Jam's definitely like one of the bands that's like my home base. Yeah. You know? So that's kind of how it looks for me. Because we've talked about this before, and I think... I don't think Pearl Jam fans are the best example of this, to be honest with you, but I know we've talked about it in terms of, and I won't even say Metallica, I'll just say metal. Um, mm-hmm. It's one of the few genres I feel like um, where you, it's real, how to say this the right way? It's more about the aesthetic and it's not really about, I don't know. You know, it's like the, I'm so fucking metal and fuck everything else. I don't think you get that a lot with like, or maybe you do. I don't know how to describe it. Like Metallica fans. Some, some Metallica fans are just Metallica fans. They're not music yeah. fans. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a music fan that has yeah. like some really solid, like, I change a lot with my taste, but there's never been a period where like, yeah, I think I'm done with Pearl Jam. And there's never been a yeah. period where I think, yeah, I'm probably, I pr- probably listened to my last Zeppelin song ever on purpose. I don't mean you know this I mean? in a, in a, in a, it's going to sound, I was going to sound like an asshole. I'll just say it. I think I'm more a bigger Pearl Jam fan than you, but I listen to a lot of music too. Does that make Wait sense? No. What do you mean you're a bigger Pearl Jam fan than me? I, I mean, I, I would never say them. I'm a bigger Pearl Jam fan I know. than you. I didn't. It does. I didn't mean it like that. That's why I said like I'm going to sound like you. An just asshole. mean I don't like mean you like probably that. listen to them a lot more consistently I listen to than them I do. A lot more. Yes. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's probably true. I did not mean like. Well, I've seen them ten times, so I'm a bigger fan. I didn't mean that bullshit at all. Yeah, they're like I said, they're one of my like. You should it cut feels that like out, home I bands. Didn't, I totally didn't mean it like that. And it probably totally sounded no, like that's an asshole. a good thing. I'm not a bigger fan. I'm not a bigger Pearl Jam fan than anybody. No, no, no. I know and that that's not way... what you think. I know you. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I was just clarifying for the conversation of what you really yeah. meant by that. And I get what you mean. Right. So um, okay. you're all good. Uh, that's the beauty of this. We can talk about it as long as we fucking want to <laughs> until it makes sense. Um, but if we were texting and I said that, we would be in like a big texting war. No, we wouldn't because I like, would never write da- you back. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. That is the truest statement ever. That's true. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. You did text me back. I was so impressed and shocked that you texted me back as quick as you did. And as funny as you did. When? Last week, I texted you. Um, I had like a shower thought. Okay. And I said, I wonder what graffiti looked like a thousand years ago. And it was literally one minute later, you sent me a picture of cave drawings. Yeah. That was the first thing that and came to like, my mind. <laughs> first of all, first of all, a minute later. Oh, I, I, I all, searched for cave paintings funny. real right when I saw it. <laughs> yeah. Because I had a moment I was, and I had to take advantage of it. And the first thing that came to yeah. mind was that response. I was like, that's pretty fucking funny. Yeah. That was pretty funny. Yeah. But this goes back to what we were talking about off air. Like people are the same. P- pretty much human beings are like the same. And so like I was in a bathroom and I saw like graffiti on the wall. Right. And I'm like. Uh, I remember seeing graffiti at the library when I was like 10 years old and being like, what the fuck? What's wrong with people? This is a library. You know, like, how dare you desecrate the library with your fucking Van Halen logo? And but it just hit me like if people were doing graffiti 40 years ago, they probably were doing it a thousand years ago. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, I know this and is I part of a conversation wonder, that wasn't part of this podcast, but yeah, I know. But people are, we're not. Our knowledge base has changed a lot, but people yeah. haven't changed that much for for, for right. a very long time. Yeah, we're not. I. I th- this is such a. Like, we don't need to talk about all this because uh, this could be like an hour. Is asshole, you know? What's that? Grog is <laughs> asshole. Yeah, it's. We just. It's. You know? I was talking to someone. <laughs> here's the basic concept. I was having a conversation with someone about a week or two ago, and I don't remember how it came up, but I was like, we just we we started grunting at each other and we right. just do more complicated grunts now. Yes. Like that's all it's, it is. Dude, and I, I don't mean that language isn't amazing. It's language is amazing. We no, don't, but it's, that was a form of communication, right? We're just, there's nothing. And we're pe- still doing it today. Pe- I, I think even people that aren't, they understand that we are a form of primate and that we evolved alongside like our cousins in the primate and ape, I guess, family or whatever. Right. Like, mm-hmm. um, but we're still just, we're still just that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we kind of, yeah, we grew up kind of thinking of, of ourselves in, ter- in terms of our place in this planet as, uh, some sort of like these anointed special beings. And we absolutely, for all the life that we are aware of, like our form of consciousness and ability to form language and art and just creativity is one of the big things that separates us from most other species on the planet. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's not special, but we're still just kind of like, monkeys with less hair yeah at the end of the day we all need to chill out a little bit about how great we are i think (laughs) you know what i'm saying like (laughs) i don't know yeah yeah whatever man talk about tangent all right right, here we go did you find the the milan oh sorry i didn't even look for it no oh (laughs) oh i was trying to well i mean i couldn't pull it in right now looking for it oh you can't no not while we're recording. Oh. I have to pull all that stuff in ahead of time. Okay. Sorry. I didn't I didn't well, know that you were waiting on me. I was just I, talking, yeah, was talking, talking. Like, I was yeah, I just was shitting to, like, all over Tyler's while you... email time. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. Man, thank you, Tyler. Uh, if you if you Tyler, if you listen to this in the future, if you haven't gotten sick of us yet and you're still listening, look up Pearl Jam, Black, Milan, 92. And it's at the very tail. End. It's after the song ends. You know what and else we could do? Talking about, yeah. We could, could email him that. Oh, we could just yeah. email him I back. Could. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll do that while you're reading the next email. No, you don't have to do that. No, I don't. Right I don't. Um, but seriously, thank you, Tyler. <laughs> thanks for thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks for writing in. Um Thanks for keeping the Pearl Jam alive generation after yeah. generation. All right. We got Lily next. Are we on the same page? Yes. Hey, We're Lily. On, yes. What's up, Lily? Uh, she says, hey, Brads, I love what you both bring to the table for this podcast. I have now listened to about 10 episodes and I can't get enough. I'm 23 and have been listening to Pearl Jam for my whole life, but I really got into them in 2013 around when Lightning Bolt was released. I saw my first show at Madison Square Garden, May 2nd, 2016, and then their uh, tour show at Fenway, uh, September 4th, 2018. My mom can I, can and I, I, can yeah. I jump in real quick? Sure. Kate Cotton was at both of those both shows. Of the, that's right. Also. She was. That was her first show was MSG. That's killer. Um my mom and I both have the same love for Pearl Jam and have been to these shows together along with Temple the Dog at Madison Square Garden and Sound Garden a few years prior to that. Mm, Man, I bet that jealous, was fucking jealous sick. Much? Yeah, fuck uh, yeah. I feel like I need to share the following since you both don't even understand how important this podcast is and the Pearl Jam community. I've had many struggles in my life, but one of the worst was my battle with addiction. I got clean uh, at 16, which was in 2013, and have been clean since. 
I owe a lot of that to Pearl Jam. As I listen, I relate so much to both of you. Brad, <laughs> Green Bean, that's pulling from way back. Old Green mm-hmm. Bean. <laughs> um, with uh, your past struggles with addiction and Brad B, I was listening to you talk about Let's Play 2 and about your friend who passed due to a drunk driver. The biggest struggle in my life has been that my dad was killed by a drunk driver when I was three years old. Holy shit. I thought I was going to be hard to talk about, like, man, having to get clean at 16 right. years old. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, what would you... <laughs> What? Keep, keep reading, oh, my friend. Boy. Okay. Uh, I'm going through another struggle now, finding out that the person I believed was my biological father is not. My biological dad decided he wasn't ready for a family and left. The dad I believed to be my blood, the one who passed away, um, chose to raise me as his own, and I'm grateful for that. But anyways, I traveled from Atlanta to New, to New Jersey, where I'm from, to visit my family after finding out this news. And for each hour I drove, I listened to the podcast. I definitely started feeling better immediately. Thanks for being around. I can't wait to listen to the rest, and I'm sorry this email was so long. Even though I'm new, you both mean a lot in my life right now. Uh, thanks for all that you do. Lily De Luisa. She even helped us out with the the phonetic Mm -hmm. pronunciation. You're welcome, Green Bean. Thank you. That (laughs) is a great email. And first, I want to say thank you for being willing to share some really personal shit. Um, Because I don't know. I think when you have, you know, a platform for a community or whatever, it's – other people that listen to this prod- podcast probably have some similar stories in their life, and I think any time you can help even one person not f- feel as alone in an experience or a situation, I think that's a beautiful thing. And it's not easy to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Vulnerability can be pretty tough. So, yeah, I appreciate that, Lily. And just listening to us for ten hours straight. Woo! Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay, Lily? Did you go cross-eyed yeah. and kind of... Man. Oof. No. I but. mean, I was in a car with you for 10 hours straight, and that was, you know, pretty rough. I've had better times. Do you remember that trip? Just driving down the, 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 the highway, and we would go live <laughs> on Instagram? <laughs> Is that what you called it? You were dadding it up with the technology. Is this thing on? How does this work? Can they hear me right now? Do people are people going to think this is funny? Wait, what's happening? Oh, I'm still recording. Wait, are we live? You mean that? I, yeah, I guess you do. Grandpa. Remember. Yeah, man. Of course I remember. Man, that was good. We man, come on, Pearl Jam. We need another fucking. I I was Wrigley, thinking about it yesterday. Wrigley I'm not kidding. Trip. I I don't remember what I was thinking about. I was like, man, I'm ready for uh, I'm ready for that road trip again, man. Yeah, totally. And well, Kate Cotton, you got to go. Which I know she would anyway, but. Oh, she we got to do that again. She'll be there. Now yeah, we all totally. know each other, Thank you. and we can all plan together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know. Yeah. And that goes for everyone that's going to be at the show, not just Kate. I can't wait for some notes. She, she doesn't listen. She doesn't. She hates us now. But she's got back to being serious. She's got her own. Um, thank you for yeah. sharing that, Lily. Yeah. And thank you, Lily. Uh, not to be. Really, I know she put it. A... Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, oh, you were Damn. saying something. There's a delay between I just, us, dude. Was, is there? Yeah. I can hear when I when I'm talking out in the open and I finish and you haven't mm-hmm. started talking, I can hear the delay. So oh, you are weird. reacting me to me a little bit late and th- therefore yeah. it's easy for me to kind of jump on you and not I just not figured know it was it. you. I know, that's why I'm I actually was... taking the time to explain it right now in front of you and everybody right. that I'm not yes. being a dick. There is a delay because right. we have to do this over the internet. I just figured it was the Red Bull talking. Sometimes me. it's that, but <laughs> right. today it's not. Okay. okay. Blame it on the delay. Yeah. Gotcha. All I was going to say is <laughs> thank you, Lily. You put a smile on my face cool. when you said that you listened to us hour after hour. Yeah, man. It's good to know that, uh, I don't know. 
Maybe Another we're putting something positive 23. in the world. The next one? No, no, Lily. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't oh, see. This is, yeah. <laughs> well, I love how, like, out of it, I don't care. This is not a, uh, you did something wrong <laughs> thing. Go on. But I love it. I love when to, you do this. To, we, we had kind of pretty much wrapped up Lily's story there, and we mm -hmm. had already started moving on. But then you jumped back to a little fact from the very beginning of the email <laughs> that happened about 10 minutes ago, and then kind of act like, ah, you're really throwing the show, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus lines. Maybe try a little professionalism. Philly 10 show. Jesus. Matt Christ. Stevens writes in. Hi, Brads. I'm not the write an email to a podcast kind of guy, but after hearing your review of Night 2 in Philly, in which our boys played 10 in its entirety, I have to share my story. My girlfriend and I went to Night 1. It was my 20 or 30 something show, but her first. As promised, the guys put on an epic set that lived up to my hyping to her of how good it was going to be for the eight months prior, lol. And as always happens, we left saying we have to go to tomorrow night's show also. Money was tight, but let's be honest. If it's my last dollar and Pearl Jam's in town, I'm spending it. And we got tickets from a scalper the day of. As we headed in, we quickly found out our tickets were fake. Mm. Now out of cash... We could not find a way in and begrudgingly left our friends who we travel with to all Pearl Jam shows. To find out later that evening that they had played 10 straight through was all caps soul crushing for me. Like even now typing this shit. <laughs> Huge bummer. Oh, he's hearing. Anyway, hearing your recap of the night helped ease the pain a little. And for that, I thank you. The show is awesome. Uh, side note: Every episode starts. <laughs> uh, side note: Every episode starts so bizarre and off track before you guys reel it in. Followed by quote: "If this is your first listen, it's not usually <laughs> it's like so this." True. Unquote. <laughs> I thought totally about that is. a couple episodes ago. I was like, "We're having to say this way too often," which means this is part of the show. I know, yeah, dude. It's it's, it's very true. Somehow it's morphed into you know forty five minutes of you know. Twilight Zones from the uh, from the 1986. Exactly. Um, keep up the good work. If you're ever at a Philly show, which I won't ever miss again, drop me a line. And remember, if you hate something, don't you do it too. Matt from Philadelphia. Amen, Dude, Matt. <laughs> First of all, he went this. straight up Clay Davis on us. She. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> you all right, bud? I read this and was like, I can't ever complain about losing the rail again at Wrigley. This oh, I got scalped for a fish show in college. Ooh, it hurt so bad. Yeah, Ugh, yeah but terrible. this was the 10 show. I know, like, I know, I know. I'm not trying to compare. I'm just saying I know that sinking feeling. I I would kill myself. I, I Well, that's a oh, little, <laughs> a little hyperbolic. Mm-hmm. Really, I would think that's about the it. thread that you're hanging by. That's what it would take. <laughs> yeah, dude, times are tough. Come on. No, I'm just trying. I mean, to like say for me, it's like if Aiden how was gone, upset I would be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's just bring it back to reality a little bit. You know what Man, I'm saying? Went dark. Well, no, you went dark. <laughs> you said I'd have to kill myself. <laughs> And what I'm saying is oh, like, just hey, if, maybe let's move where the bar is for that. You mean if Aiden was gone for a few days, not gone forever? No, I meant gone forever. If something oh. happened to Aiden, yeah, bye bye. Right. Oh, that's okay. Never mind. Now I understand what you're trying to say. Yes, I think I was pretty clear. Did it, was it was I confusing you, in the way you, I said it? No. Oh, okay. I was confused in the way I heard it. Oh, okay. There's a difference, which that happens all the time. Mm. I'm not going to ask you to unpack that. So uh, <laughs> thanks again, Matt. Appreciate it. Was yeah, there something else you were going to say Sorry. about that? Sorry about that. Nope. Okay, cool. Let's move on. All right. We're not going to do. We got Chris Davis. Mm -hmm. Yo. Um, 
He says, I enjoyed the last two episodes. Brad was the first Pearl Jam side project I listened to. Uh, I love Buttercup. It's just a nice song. As far as Alone is concerned, I was really happy they played that at Wrigley also. That was uh, such a great show. Let me share with you guys about my experience with train horns. <laughs> oh, I forgot about it. Was that on the show? The episode? Yeah, We're yeah, talking about horn blasters? Yes, dude, because I laugh for like five minutes. Oh, when man. You <laughs> Sometimes I, I can't remember horn. what gets edited <laughs> yeah. in and out. You know what I mean? Like, because we talk for oh, so long. You might have, you might, that might have been at the end after the show. That might have been like a... Well, obviously it was recording. on a show because they're writing about no, it. No, no, I'm saying that might have been a pre-show thing that you stuck on the end, end or something. I don't know if that was during That's the funny. show. Anyway, it, I love it, that. But, yeah, I love that shit. I <laughs> love watching people get scared. Anyway, yeah. but not like a. That's not terrible. No, you know no, what I mean. Um, yeah, we, see we here. covered this ground. Yeah, I had a little series I was doing for a little, little while uh, where I would hide at a bathroom door. You know, like. Aiden go pee or something, and I would just yeah. stand, and I'd have the video rolling, and the second he'd mm-hmm. open the door, I'd just scream in a really low voice and go, wash your hands, and he would just <laughs> lose his shit and yelp like a little kid, like a little girl, and then would be so mad and relieved <laughs> yes. that he wasn't about yeah. to die, in fact, you know what I mean? Right. Like, Anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, where was I? Let me share. Oh, with let you me guys share with you guys about, about my, my experience. experience with train horns. My friend stopped by and wanted me to look under his truck for a noise. He didn't know what it was. Oh, I would be so fucking mad. I would have ripped that guy's. <laughs> yeah. I haven't even finished the email. Uh, I, I thought it was unusual for me to do this uh, because he is a truck mechanic. So I looked and got I blasted by I the love horn. This. <laughs> oh, you love the asshole with the horn? Of course you do. Yeah, I love the mechanic. You guys want to know about if you're new to the can show? You look under, can you look under my hood? If you're new to the show and you want to know the basic differences between me and Brad B, here it is right here. I'm the guy blasting the horn. Exactly. You're the guy looking under Ugh. the hood. Mm, no, I'm just the guy that thinks the guy that's blasting the horn is an asshole. Yeah. Well, you just admitted that you do it's it. It's hilarious. I don't do it. Well, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. But that stuff's so loud that it, like, shakes your insides. Yeah. I mean, that's truly yeah. terrifying. Like, you could get, right. like, you could lose your fucking hearing from that shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's so funny. But it's still so funny. I mean, if it had to happen, I can't do anything right. about it. At least let me right. watch. exactly. Let me watch. Anyway, um... Mm. <laughs> mm, Oh, my so heart. I looked and got blasted by the horde. My heart still stops when I think about it. I beat the shit out of him, and then we produced, <laughs> produ- proceeded to drive around town and blast that fucker at people. I was, it, uh, it was so much fun. Uh, there's a train track that runs through town and would freak people the fuck out. I got bored tonight and remixed the track order for Lost Dogs. I put them in <laughs> order by album order. I love how just quickly he went from that to, uh, and by the way, <laughs> yes. here's another playlist yeah. for you guys. Uh, yeah, so he made a Lost Dogs playlist in chronological order by album, yeah. um, and that is up on. Uh, I'm assuming it's a public playlist. So if you're on Apple Music, uh, yeah, um, I think if you just look up Lost Dogs remix, remix yeah, it should come it should up be there in a playlist. Um, yeah, yeah, man, thanks, Chris. Good to hear from you again, Pearl Jam dude. Thank you. Yeah, dude. All right, we got one more. One more. Hey, Brads, another uh, – I can't do it. Another – You have can to. I? Yeah, just because okay. you're not British, you can still read it. <laughs> it's, it's Australian. Oh, he's not – is he – oh, he's Australian. They he's have Australian, a yeah. lot of the same slang. Come, come on. That's true. Another cranking episode, lads. A song like Alone you, is a on. testament. To, yeah, okay, what? Now, be honest with me. Were you really mm. earnestly trying for a, yes, for an yes. uh, Australian that's, accent? That's how bad it is. That's how bad it is. Another creaking episode, lads. Because it sounds like someone found the language center of your okay. brain and just took a little mm. scooper to it. Right. Yeah, I can't do voices, dude. I noticed. But I tried. That was me trying. I like that you try it. It's good. It's good. Oh, thank you. 
a song like Alone is a testament to how good these a song like alone is a testament to how good they are at writing songs. How many songwriters are good enough to have tracks like alone state of love and trust and breath all from the same era. Never make it on a record yep. as a musician. It almost makes you sick. Yep. That's why they're one of the greatest. Yeah. One thing that has driven me crazy about alone since the very first time I heard it is the intro. I cannot for the life of me work out how to musically count the timing of the cut maybe you can shed some light on the matter lions yeah uh oh god two and a half hours ago when we got on line <laughs> with each other we actually yeah. went over this what did i say it was nine i four? heard you nine four uh, i thought you said seven uh no it's nine four okay i think i'm 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 very confident in the answer but I could be wrong. But I'm and that's sure the it's like four. the little, the little shuffle part, or after the shuffle part. Well, I'm talking. Oh, sorry, I just hit the mic. Uh, <clears> I'm throat> talking throat> about the like the opening riff. Yeah, because if you count it, it's uh, I can't sing it and count it at the same time. It's one, two, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two. That's what they're doing. Can you play it and count it out while it's playing? Or can you not do that? Not on the fly, no. Okay. Sorry. Well. <laughs> but that's it. I mean, it's it's a nine. It's nine. You can't out um, a nine and it works. I totally agree with Blazy. I'd have Alone on 10 instead of Garden or Deep in a heartbeat. Not that I don't love those tracks, but Alone is that good. Keep up the great work, gentlemen. Brad Harris, Adelaide, Australia. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, Brad. Another Brad. Another Brad. Keeping it in the family. Brad H. All right. Well, that's it for emails. Again, if you'd like to email us, the email address is singlepodcasttheory at gmail.com. We are on social media. And if you would like to support the show, you can head over to patreon.com, P A T R E U N.com slash single podcast theory. Oh, the Red Bull's wearing off. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. Um, Go crack open another one. Any other kind of like housekeeping before we move on to the next mm, bit? No. We got everything good? Oh, God. I think so. All right. We're good to go. So you know what it's time for. Are you ready? I am ready. For your own pearls of wisdom? Yes. Brad B's pearls of wisdom. It's motherfucking Brad B's pearls of wisdom. Check out the big brain on Brad. You're a smart motherfucker, that's right. All right, what you got for us this week? I love it. Uh, well, in 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 uh, how do you say it? Uh, I'm going to talk about verses. <laughs> wow. All right. You okay. How would you say that in 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 blank of the show today being about verses live? I'm going to talk about verses. What's the blank? What's the blank word? In in, in lieu. In lieu of no, what, what no, are you trying to say? That's like, like in honor. I guess in honor of today's episode. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna talk Sticking about the with album the theme versus. of today's el- episode. Maybe. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Can yeah, you cut okay. that out and make me sound no. not so stupid? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Versus sophomore slump is one of the most dreaded phrases you can mutter to a musical artist trying to follow up a hit debut. But avoiding a critical and commercial step backward was exactly what Pearl Jam needed to do while writing and recording what would become their second full-length album. Versus interview footage with the band recorded during the touring cycle for 10 implied they were eager to return to the studio to record new music. But due to slow building and the massive success of their debut, Pearl Jam remained on tour probably for longer than initially anticipated. Thankfully, as the best bands often do, Pearl Jam somehow found a way. 
hooking up with producer Brennan O'Brien, the band the band made a conscious effort to make the album sound more like the way they sounded on stage. Uh, Eddie Vedder recalled in recording verses uh, in that the recording of verses was not all milk and cookies. Quote, I had a hard time. I hadn't finished all the lyrics by any means. And I remember thinking being in some kind of idyllic place was exactly not where I wanted. I wasn't going to be getting inspiration from the trees. I had this Toyota truck and had a shell in the back, so I had a sleeping bag. Just going to park up the street in San Francisco in Skid Row and trying to get inspiration from the conversations of crack addicts walking by or something. I remember it being really difficult. It felt like we were still on tour, and now we're making decisions which to me were more important than, quote, where's the next show going to be, unquote. It was, do we cut out the bridge or lengthen the chorus? The first record we made, not thinking anybody was going to hear it. Now it's a little different. Millions of people heard that last thing. I wish we would have changed it then, and I'm not going to let that happen again. And everyone's probably feeling that way on on different things. We weren't allowing ourselves space. We talked about that before right. that he just like took off because the, they were like up in the mountains or something. And that's like real plush studio. Right. Um, the CD and cassette cover versus featured a photo that Jeff Amen snapped of two goats in his home state of Montana with one showing off its choppers and snout. I never knew that Jeff took that picture. Did you know that? I think I did actually. Mm, well, mm. you are a bigger fan of me, of Pearl Jam, than me. Not according to you. Did you did you catch that Freudian slip? No. I said, you're a bigger fan of me. <laughs> yeah, I rarely listen to you, bro. I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, at one point... <laughs> uh, at one point, the album was supposedly going to be titled Five Against One. And early printings of the cassette actually said Five Against One on the tape while the early CDs simply stated Pearl Jam on the cover and the spine of the case. Regardless of the title snafus, Versus re- was released to much fanfare on October 19, 1993, less than a month after another hotly anticipated rock album arrived, Nirvana's In Utero. Versus sold a whopping 950,000 copies in just its first five days of release. Sales did slow down eventually. At last count in 2000, Versus had made it to seven times platinum. Dude, that's so, like, just mind-boggling. Those numbers are, yeah. Was that it? Seven times. That's it? Oh, okay. I didn't know you were done. Dun, dun, dun. Gang, gang, gang. Did I just start doing that when I'm done? Gang, gang, gang. Um, cool. Thanks for if that. If you want to hear more about verses, we looking. did a whole episode on. Oh, that's on true. Versus. You can go back. I kind of want to. I kind of want to go back and hear our old album episodes, and I kind of don't. Mm. Maybe we should come back to some of those. Hmm. Kind of revisit our thoughts on these records and see if they've changed at all. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for that, man. Let's see. Brad B. <laughs> now I'm going to have that in my head for the next it's hour. It's catchy. Thanks. It is catchy, dude. You sh- you should. You know what you should do. Hmm. You should see if you could find a job where you like make up little jingles like that. And see, you know, you could I like, literally make do a that living, for a living doing that. Oh, I know, dude. Go, oh, okay, go okay. Sorry, <laughs> it's like you do realize that I do the commercial <laughs> yes. stuff for the studio, right? <laughs> It'd Some, be cool if that was like your job. Like, know, that's all you crazy, did all day right? was make jingles. What? Like, do you have any? Like, what? What would you do a jingle for? Like, I don't know. Like. uh Mac and cheese. I, I actually, no, the new Popeye spicy chicken sandwich. Well, I can give you that's an example that's along the same lines of the one that I did for you guys. I do this uh, oh, okay. podcast for uh, a film festival, um, and mm-hmm. they're really cool. But uh, they have a segment that's now called um, uh, it's called Reflections, and so <laughs> I. Mm. Did this? Wait, let's see if I can find it. I've got it here somewhere. 
Yeah, this is what I do with my time, man. Let's see here. <laughs> let's drag this. Let's see if I can make this happen without the computer freaking out. Uh, yeah, what do you think about this guy played. right here? Uh, this is my little intro for Reflections. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous it's, it's a, I love is it is that real yeah that's what is happens that every like, time before that segment on their podcast <laughs> it's it would be it would it's so funny is that you saying reflections oh yeah here it is again here we go if it was if <laughs> <laughs> Literally took me about so four funny. minutes and twelve seconds. To think, yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah, man. I have fun with that kind of shit because it's just like <laughs> any chance. Because here's the deal. Okay, I've talked some about the years of touring. Uh, what mm-hmm. what might sound like the more glamorous parts of being a musician, right? Uh, even though they're not. It's cool. It's amazing. Whatever. I'm grateful. Um, But the other reality is you also have to, and it depends on where you live and what you're plugged into, whatever. But as we all know, I live in Birmingham, Alabama, not exactly the music mecca of the United States as far as like being able to make a living doing this kind of stuff. So when I have to, to do these ridiculous commercial songs where they're like, uh, they just basically they say, here's a really cool song that's popular right now. And we don't have enough money to buy the rights for the real Katy Perry song. So mm-hmm. can you just make us something that sounds pretty much exactly like it, but that we're not going to get sued for it. And I go, right. okay. And it's fucking terrible. And everyone takes it way too seriously. And I do a really good job with it. I'm really good at it. But it's also yeah. like, this doesn't mean anything. No, one, it's not going to really help your commercial that fucking much. Like, I hate, I'm sorry, but I hate those songs. Like I see it a lot on like Axis TV. Do you know that channel? No, I don't know. It's all music. It's like all they show concerts, they show like interviews with bands. It's that kind of station. Newer MTV like, type thing. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. But whenever they show like, they'll do like top 10 rock songs, right? Mm-hmm. But they don't have the rights to the songs. So it'll be like back in black, but like two notes. Yeah, different. Are like yeah. different. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I hate it. Yeah, man. But it's like, and so when I get to do something fun, do. like, yeah, just ridiculous and be an idiot, like, the right. thing, like your pearls of wisdom thing and that right. whole reflections yeah. thing, like, they're fun. It's fun, man. Um, anyway, uh, so let's talk about this show. Let's talk about versus, let's. versus mm-hmm. live, live, live. April 16th, 2016, Greenville, South Carolina. The Pearl Jam Boys um, open with Corduroy. You should just start playing it. Um, you want to just, just jam on yeah. Corduroy? We'll, yeah, Even though we'll that's not part of the, the thing? Right. That's why I want to, yeah, that'll be our Here's how the music. show started, everybody. Yeah. With our beloved Corduroy, which mm-hmm. I think is a great opener, by the way. Um. But yeah, so they did Corduroy, Long Jam, and then they they pull out the whole Versus record from top to bottom. Uh, mm-hmm. which, which, just in general, we'll do our kind of general conversation real quick before we right. really dig into song overall. by song. Which, how would you feel about this? Uh, overall, it's a great night, great show. I listened to the whole thing the other day. Uh, I was only going to listen to the Versus part, and then I'm like... Well, let's keep going, and it's a, it's a great night, great show. But it, just for the verses stuff, pretty pretty great. I mean, we'll get into the track by track, but it's overall it's fucking amazing that this album sounds as good as it does twenty years later live. Right. No, I agree. I hmm. I have some really great <laughs> feelings about this performance, and I have some uh, 
feelings about some of these performances. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we'll get into this it. This isn't. Yeah, I think the general thing that I will say is that I agree with you. It's fucking great. They played all the verses like. Yeah. God, I wish I could have been there. And it, I'm sure mm-hmm. being there was just like, holy shit. You, you're like, for real. I mean, I feel like what's special about Pearl Jam is that every show is different and everything is, every show is kind of special because of that. You know what I mean? That's yeah. why the set lists are so fucking important and such a big yeah. part of their identity. Um, but it's just that, that's why I, for the most part, stay away from this kind of stuff because I just what am I gonna do like watch this stuff and if they if something's weird or especially since I make music for a living I don't know I just find myself feeling critical the whole time and you know what I mean <laughs> like yeah I don't know I still feel a little bit weird How, however my point is that with the other live records that we've done uh, or when they've done the records live. This is the mm-hmm. first one that's kind of like, that we've covered, that I'm like, man, there's some not great parts of this. You know, from a, if you're going to stand back and not talk about it from the perspective of, you know, having been there or something like that. Yeah. If we're really going to yeah. talk about some of these performances, it's like, yeah. well, I was really excited for them to get to this song because they never play <laughs> it, but now I kind of understand why they don't play it. Yeah. You know what well, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how I feel about some of it. So, but again, it's one of those things where like they're my favorite fucking band. I'm not, right? You know what I mean? I'm just being honest. So that's why yeah. I have a weird relationship with this live shit. So, anyway, um, I do want to point out though that while we're not really talking about Corduroy right now, there is a great mm-hmm. moment if you want to watch it on YouTube where, um. And I noticed it because I think they were moving into Have we like heard it yet? a yeah I think it's already pa- it's already passed it was toward oh, okay. the beginning of the song okay they go into one of the like the turnarounds or something like that which is normally like kind of a bigger part maybe it's when they re uh, uh, revisit the intro but with full band you know playing that main riff mm-hmm. and normally I mean it doesn't matter who the drummer is at that point it's like cymbal crash washy loud world. And I started, no, I was like, why is there just kick and snare and no cymbals at all? And so I rewound it a couple seconds. And if you look, Matt goes to hit a cymbal and his stick just keeps on going. <laughs> he just totally slips out of his hands and just goes flying across the <clears throat> stage. And he just reaches over and grabs another stick and doesn't fuck up the song because he's a fucking professional and he's Matt Cameron. Yeah. But it is funny. It to happens. Because none of the band saw it happen. No one else noticed, you know what I mean? But oh, okay. you could see it yeah. flying across the stage. Yeah. Um, no, I just thought this this performance of Corduroy was pretty pretty good. And it's we've said it before. It's always cool when they come out with a with a rager. Yeah, a banger, absolutely. If you will. I will. I yeah, really will. I know you will. Uh, uh, well, should we move, just kind of move into the set and kind of dig into this yeah. stuff? Sure. All right, cool. Um, well, of course, we're going to start off with with Go. This is one of those songs that really worked out in the long run as far as, um, I mean, Eddie sounds great. This is not a criticism. It's just that as people get older, it's harder to pull certain songs off. It's just, it's just the way it goes. You know what I mean? That's part of getting older. That was totally the thing I noticed was his voice sounds incredible. Yeah. Like this song, the key of this song still really works for him, you know?
And then the next thing I thought was Mike, <laughs> Mike fucking McCready once again. Dude, he's he's on this night. Yeah, that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. dude. Yeah, t- <laughs> Mike is not the issue tonight. <laughs> well, there's no issue, but mm. I, all right, we'll get to it. <laughs> Nothing totally out of the ordinary if you're at the show this night. That's not a unreasonable, right. you know, beginning to a set. No reason to think, oh, they're about to do verses. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, no, they just come out with two really fast songs. I mean, I don't know what the count is, but it's not like Go is a rare song in their set list, right? Mm, I mean, no. I don't think they play it up all the time or anything, but, you know, it's. Nothing, nothing we were like, wow, that's crazy. They're playing this song. Right. Um, <laughs> right. But then, you know, maybe when you get, you kind of go, gets done, and then you hear this. Maybe you would start thinking something's up. What do you think? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Probably not. Though. But I, th- probably not too good to be true. Right. They have done, you know, songs from albums back to back before yeah uh so no and they, this was when was uh like yield and no code was 2014 so this is two years later right they haven't done anything like that in a while they played a few shows already right so but in the back of your head maybe I, you know what though i probably would not notice probably not i don't think i would either three or four songs honestly in. Uh, okay. No, I mean, I, to me, when daughter hits, that's the dead giveaway. Dead giveaway. Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very dead much. Dead giveaway. Yeah. Totally. Now, as t- far as keys go, he sounds great. This mm-hmm. isn't a criticism, but I do watch this <clears> and I go, F- I bet there- there's got to be a little bit of him that goes, fuck, I wish we could fucking change the key of this one. Because <laughs> it, it's it's pretty high the whole time. Like, you really got to... He's screaming up there at the top of his register for pretty much the whole song. You know what I mean? A lot of screaming. I mean, I don't understand all that keys and down tuning for the singer i don't understand all well that. They, yeah and they don't do it but I, my point is that they're one of the only bands that's been around that long that doesn't drop everything down and i'm just saying this is one of those keys for him now at 50 whatever years old there's got to be a part of mm-hmm. like god damn <laughs> let's drop this from a to g please I'm watching it, the video yeah. of this, and when he's doing the five, 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 he's like doing like jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watched it today. I watched the whole yeah. ten part today. I mean, I mean the verses part today. <clears throat> um, sorry. 
Well, I mean, it's just another song. Like, they don't do anything. Well, okay, I'll say this. And Daughter actually is a good example of this. When I, I do mm-hmm. like that when they do the, the records live, they don't... They do the record version of the song for the most part. They don't do yeah, really no long tags. extended tags on anything. Um, or... We'll get into it, but Rearview Mirror is a little jammy. Yeah, it is. But not not nearly as much as the like like twelve minute version that we usually get. Yeah. And to be honest with you, you know, when a song like Rearview that is such an important song in in the catalog mm. and so many people well, I guess that's, I mean, the whole thing with Pearl Jam is con- emotionally connecting to their music, I think. But um, I don't know. The, the Those songs that have like extended sections have come from years and years of just kind of morphing naturally on stage. Oh, yeah. And yeah. to try and kind of reverse engineer that back in a way is kind of hard because now you've just slowly created this path in the dirt that you can yeah. just kind of slide into easily mm-hmm. after all that time and Muscle just kind memory. of pull that back must be a little bit weird you know well it's funny to when you say that like the muscle memory of it in in daughter the crowd starts doing the um uh the o's i don't know how you say it you'll hear the crowd right start to to do what the tag part would be and right. the band just stops playing. stops playing yeah mm-hmm. well, let's go ahead and listen to it here's uh yeah. here's daughter This is one of those songs that I actually like that they played a little bit faster live than on the record. Yeah. I like the energy of it live a little bit faster. It's cool. What do you think of that stand up bass? What do you mean? <laughs> I, I thought like you it. hated it. No, he's oh. the exception. Oh, okay, cool. I, I like both his fretless and his kind of upright stand thing. Up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To be honest with you, I, I usually don't ever have a problem with upright bass. It's usually just fretless. Oh, okay. Is is this a fretless? Yeah, upright all upright bass? all upright bases are fretless. I mean, okay. traditionally, I'm sure right. people make upright bases with frets, but that kind of defeats the purpose. But whatever. <laughs> Yeah, right here, the crowd starts doing the, oh, 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 right. oh.
<laughs> the band's like, peace. Fade this nope. bitch out. <laughs> yeah. Album version. Yep. I love it, though. I love that they do that. It's, it's, <clears throat> uh, it's, a, you know, the OCD in me is like, yeah. That's that's how you're supposed to do it. That if you're doing an album show, you have to do the album version. Yeah, I'm glad that Pearl Jam is following your rules. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I don't know how I could go on if they didn't. If they did, like you know, save it for later tag or another brick in the wall. I yeah, you probably like, couldn't. This is not right. That's not on the album, Eddie. You'd probably so. just have to run your car at full speed into an embankment. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's probably what would have to happen. Yes. All right, let's listen to Glorified G. Now, I noticed as soon as Matt did that little drum fill to start the song, yeah, there was like a certain pocket of the crowd that cheered really loud. Yeah. It's like and it's I official. Think, yeah. Because <laughs> this yep. is a song they do not play that often. Right? No. No. Not really. Not super rare, but not not played all the time either. This is one of those, like, these first, for the most part, these first four songs, also, you don't, I didn't find myself, you know, we, we've we heard other drummers play other drummers' parts for this band, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. over the years, and, you know, this was such an important, like, introduction to what everyone thought of at the beginning as the original Pearl Jam drummer, you know, before, like, it, you know, everyone understood through press and interviews that, like, okay, Dave Cruzen was on the record, but this guy is Dave Abrazies, and you know what I mean? It was kind of his, this record yeah. was his intro into the world, which was very important, I feel like, for drums. Um, oh, and I want to say this real quick, and I'll get back to that. But I love that Mike is like the MVP, most dependable player for like when they do these record things. He goes back, and you can tell, like, he's playing the lead from the record, and I love that. He's not just kind of jamming over whatever key they're in. Like, he's doing a lot right. of the really specific parts from the yeah, lead, he takes it, the guitar he solo. Takes the, he takes the quote-unquote album version seriously for these shows. Right. Um, but back to the, the drums. I just wanted to catch that while it was happening on the song. But um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it all feels good. You don't have it for me. Any, I, I noticed that I wasn't thinking, "Wow, it'd be good to see," or "Man, it makes me think of the parts on the record that Dave A played and those years of touring and stuff like that." I don't really think about it for these first like four or five songs. Mm-hmm. And I say all that to lead up to what's going to be happening in a couple songs. And I, mm-hmm. I'm, at, mm-hmm. I think that maybe we might already be on the same page with this but we'll get there yeah. i just want to make sure yeah. before some things are said in the future on this episode that <laughs> right, people, my love just hang for in. matt cameron runs real right. deep yes he's an amazing drummer yep absolutely 
He's my favorite. Yeah. When it comes down to it, my favorite Pearl Jam drummer. At the same time, I have opinions about all things that I love, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. part of the show is sharing those opinions. And I don't, right. you don't have to agree with me. We're just talking about a band. I love all these guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Having said that, let's. Uh, of course, we're still good, but we'll move on to your favorite mm. song. Yes, um, please. I was super psyched about this. <clears throat> mm, me too. I know. I know, Brad. Here we go. What are you laughing at? Go ahead, make fun of it. I have to say, too, one of the things about the song is the the Stones verse guitar part is one of my favorite Stone guitar parts of all time. They're like near, 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 near. It's just a cool part. I do like that. Yeah. Definitely a Stone kind of weird... Need like neener neener neener. neener yeah, know? but it just works. Yeah, when you describe yeah, it, it's, it's like cool. it shouldn't I, work. Right. <clears throat> Little crowd crowd participation. Yeah. Now, when when a singer does that, is it literally to help his voice out, or is it like he's trying to get the crowd into it too? Both. Or is it both? It's a legit yeah. thing to do, but it, it does yeah. have the added benefit of. If you need a quick rest, then you can just throw that mic up in the air. He, I, right. I think, I think he probably definitely does it if he feels his voice going a little bit or something on a certain part, mm-hmm. and he knows that he can kind of rely on the crowd for that. Uh, but I also yeah. do think he does it to engage with the crowd. <clears throat> Whereas, like, when wow. I remember going to see Danzig uh, mm-hmm. two and a half, three years ago, just because it was like, man, I never saw him live, them live. Back in the yeah. day, I was too young at the time, I think, and I was like, well, I'm just going to go see, I can say I've seen Danzig, and that motherfucker right. was just, he just had his mic pointed to the crowd the whole fucking time, because he can't <laughs> fucking do it anymore, yeah. and you know what I mean? Like, it was just a total bullshit <clears throat> crutch, yeah. but I don't think Have you seen that. any of the Misfit stuff here lately? No. Have you watched any of that? I wonder if he's if he's if he's you know done any better I doubt it cause those are some big shows the Misfit reunions yeah I like when he does the little ad libs on his lyrics yeah you gotta get the fuck out of there (laughs) right (laughs) it's great those moments where we're like if you ever wonder what the song's really about that's probably it you know what I'm saying um it's just a song about you got to get the fuck out of there sometimes. Uh, how do you want to do... Let me see what we got here. All right. <laughs> let's do this. Um, I'm going to employ a little technique that... Okay. Yeah, okay. Actually, yeah. Let's just listen to WMA real quick. You Look, you're the, you're the producer. No, I don't think it's my, about to, that. Off the top of my head, I think we should listen to the whole song and then go into the Dave A stuff. But if you've got something better than that, I don't go know. for it. Uh-uh. I was just going to say, like, I'm just going to go ahead and preface everything one last yes. time and, and employ a technique that I learned, which is, uh, again, like I said before the last song, 
Matt Cameron is one of the people, you know, that kept my love for rock and roll and drums like alive when I was a kid, you know. Um, but so did Dave A. And this is one of those moments where if you ever thought about um, what if Dave A. wasn't the drummer on this record or what, you know, when you do the, what if Jack Irons hadn't played on yield, what would it sound like then? I think we're kind of getting a little taste of that. And I don't know, for me, it was just kind of disappointing. So anytime I have criticism, the rest of the, not criticism, but that's, you know, not positive sounding. I'm just going to say MFC. And that means, I love Matt Cameron. He's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to say that every fucking time because I'm sorry, tired of saying it when we talk about drummers. I'm just going to say MFC, and then I'm going to tell you how I feel about it. How about that? Does okay. that work? Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. Here is uh, WMA. Now this part sounds pretty cool. This yeah. this intro part, but he abandons. Nice groove. Yeah, yeah, he kind of abandons that. We're, I'm talking about MFC, who we love. Absolutely. I think this is one of the most underrated Pearl Jam songs in the catalog, personally. Oh, yeah. I, I would agree love with you. This it's a song. great song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They really did something they... kind of special for them, I think, with this yeah, song. Yeah, totally. I will say this, dude. Matt playing this song, it just does not sound. Obviously, it doesn't sound like Dave A. The way he plays it, and Matt's not playing it bad. No, he's it's just a, not no. doing. He's just not doing the drum parts that Dave A. does. Right. And this song with Dave A. and Jeff's bass line. That's to me. That's what this song is like. Yeah, I totally agree, man. It was that when I section. hear this. Yeah, since the moment I listened to this album the first day, you know, twenty six years ago, like when I think of what this song is about, it's those drums. Yep. Well, I mean, so, that's where this literally where the song came from, is, right? I mean, yeah, it came from I that drum so. groove. Fuck right. around the studio, if I remember correctly. Um, but even regardless of that, like, that's why I'm being so careful about the criticism. It's not about Matt yeah. fucking it up or doing anything wrong right. or whatever. It's just right. that it just shows that there are moments on each of these records that have different drummers where the drummer is so completely crucial to what the song is. And not only that, yeah. like you were talking about, it was also crucial that... It was it was Jeff and Dave A in this case, right? And there's mm -hmm. other cases yeah. you can make in the later records where it probably wouldn't be as cool, maybe, if Dave A was doing it 
on the newer records. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm saying is this is one of those examples. That there's a few on this record where it's like, man, that was just lightning in a bottle that got captured. Yeah, where it you know? does, yeah. that magic is those two dudes yeah. playing this song. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they only played this song live 16 times. They've only played it 16 times. Right. And that's this part is of it, too. Them, so. I mean, that's what I was going to say. I guess I'll go ahead and say it now. Um, cause I don't think we're really missing a whole lot of what's going on right now. And again, it's not, it's nah. awesome, man. Like I would have loved to have been there. It's just for a song that I love so much. And it's so dynamic on the record and yeah. it, it comes from the brain of a different drummer with a different style. It just leaves me kind of disappointed to, mm-hmm. to watch it on YouTube or to listen to it, you know, af- not having yeah. been there or whatever. So, yeah. Well, now that we've lost everybody, we can talk about how this is all just a simulation anyway. We can get back to that conversation. Right. Oh, you guys now missed that a no lot. One's listening to us, yeah. Oh, we went. You guys we missed went. a lot before uh, yeah. before the old intro started. <laughs> um, Did I get deep? Did I blow your mind? I think you took advantage of the fact that I was on a Red Bull high. Right. <laughs> You're like, oh, what are all the things that people argue about in society? I'm going to ask Brad L about right. those. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so WMA. One of my favorite songs, and yeah. I'll say this to continue from from my perspective as someone that has to like has I made a living for a long time having to do what Matt is doing right now, which is recreating someone else's part. Right? Yeah. Sometimes there's I'll drum parts out there. where it's like. Anyone that ha- can keep a beat can play this. You know what I mean? Whatever. And then there's stuff like yeah. this, where like the drums to the drums and percussion to WMA were are like are are a composition by themselves. Yeah. And if, if you don't feel that way, then at least the drums with the bass as a rhythm section, I think it, gonna, it stands throw, on its own. You know what I mean? I'm gonna throw this out, and I'll preface it with saying that Dave A is my favorite Pearl Jam drummer. But sure, yeah, I, we know that. In another, in another reality where Dave is still in the band and they played this song in 2016, I bet it wouldn't sound as good as it did 20 years ago. Right. I think there's just a magic, Yep. like you said, lightning in the bottle in 1993, and that was it. They, it's just they wouldn't be able to recreate it. No. Even with Dave A playing it today, yeah, maybe not. Uh, and it, it, the stylistically too, like it, it, this also d- is a really good example for the quote unquote non musicians and stuff of like comparing the differences between the two. Because what, what I was saying is like someone sometimes you play for artists or bands or whatever that just have such a huge catalog and some of these songs don't get played live. And so you're not going to put the time in and, and add gear to your rig for this one time that you're going to play this song. Mm -hmm. You just fucking, you get the point across in your own way. He's technically hitting all the right accents and kind of rhythms and all that kind of stuff like he's not doing anything wrong you know it's just kind of flat and that's it and i don't the thing is i i don't really get bummed out for wma but i do get bummed out for the next one the next one from a drum perspective it will get to it after we listen to the the dave a live performance with uh i was gonna say pinnock but yeah. Blood is where I really kind of got bummed out. Anyway. Really? I'll have to listen to it again, but can we yeah, can we do a little just a little little taste of Dave A yep. live from Here. the Fox Theater in yep. Atlanta? Absolutely. Here we go. Here's a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, already it's just like, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So what, that was 90, was that 95? 94. This 94, this performance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. I mean, that's part of it, too. It's just like, it was still within a couple yeah, of years of it happening. Years. Yeah. You've got Doug yeah. Pinnock on stage with them. Um, and you got 20 years younger, you know, men yeah. playing these songs. So it's, you know, well, I think we're just, we're trying to. I don't know. For me, it's about illustrating the difference between a player and someone that has a voice with their instrument, which all of the Pearl Jam drummers have a voice in their instrument. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why mm-hmm. we're talking about Dave A right now in this context is because this is a really good example of a lot of people can imitate beats and stuff like that, but not yeah. everyone can kind of have a voice with the instrument of choice for them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. hopefully this kind of, because he, he also brings that kind of intensity. Like here's another part of it from that same Fox theater thing. I mean, that's got the intensity of the record in its slide, you know? And it's just kind of my favorite part of the song, to be honest with you. <laughs> I love that part of the song, <laughs> Yeah, man. it's awesome. So good. It is so good. Eddie's just, like, pissed, and I love it. And what... What are the drums called that he's playing that make those real tight sounds? Oh, didn't he even email us one time and tell us? Or yeah, a comment <laughs> on social media or something? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I th- I'm pretty sure it was those Octobons and Rototoms. Yeah, I could be the, totally yeah, wrong, but that's, um, I think yeah, that's Yeah, no, I can't remember if... Hmm. Sorry, Dave, if you're still listening. <laughs> we were we bad did, students, That's who Dave. we need to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we totally should. Um. Well, and okay, let's, so let's single, go on with the next podcast track. theory at gmail.com. Yeah, hit us up, Dave. Hit us up. Hit us um, up, Dave. Seriously. No, but for real. For real. For real. Uh, here's yeah. another one. Here's Blood. We love you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Please. <laughs> That was me. That was oh me. Oh my god, that freaks me out. I was like, <laughs> what was that? Eddie, what happened? Is it a little rough, huh? I don't think it's rough. I think it, it's just another. It's just a back-to-back. Like on my notes, I kind of wrote. This is a little harsh, I admit, but I wrote Snoresville. <laughs> really? Yeah, because I just. This is again personal preference. I just love this song so fucking much, and. When you hear this, I, I realize that part of that is specifically the drum part for like the verses and stuff. That like all those symbols, and oh, it's just yeah. so thrashy yeah. and fucked up. And it's it's like simplistic. It's like caveman drums, whereas this is like it's just he's he's playing so well. 
right. and that's what right. I don't love about it. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah, get yeah. get a little fucked up with it. That's what I love about this song. Yeah, but another example well, of like they're still killing it. You know, but yeah, this Ed's voice is a little off on this one. Well, fuck, man. I mean, but it's again. He, but he was a song, little off sometimes on this song back in fucking you know yeah. 1996 yeah. too. So yeah. That's just the the nature of live. That's why yeah. I so f- f- I love doing these episodes, but I, I yeah. as you can tell, I'm apologizing constantly because it's weird to criticize. Yeah, because I, I mean, dude, we <laughs> love I mean? these like, guys. We love these songs. Yeah, it's just and dude, if we were there, we'd be like loving every yeah. second of it. And you know? and, and dude, just, these two songs are really my only real like yeah complaints to be honest with you and it's yeah. and it's picky well but. come on dude i i could never sing this song no you know no. so <laughs> no 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 i mean yeah all right we've 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 apologized enough everyone gets where we're at yeah so yeah yeah i just yeah it was like bummer when we got to these two songs man mm-hmm. i don't know yeah but no, we love you, Ed. He, 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 single podcast there at gmail dot com. If you wanna, if he if he's listening, you think he's listening? Oh, he listens to tons of podcasts. <laughs> yes, about his band. Yes. Well, there's so many. Oh God! All right. Yeah, I'm having a Red Bull crash now. Um, and now, do you need to go get one? Go get one. No. What is wrong with you? Are you my friend? Oh. <laughs> you should be like, no. You should never drink those ever again. That's what you should say. True. Not like, They're hey, why don't you take you. a break and go get some more? <laughs> why don't you just get gacked out of your know. brain on I Red never, Bull? I don't think I've ever had one. No, don't ever do it. It's dumb. Anyway, let's listen to Rear View Mirror. Mm. Fucking a! Now we're back. Yeah, I I'm, agree. I'm like getting chills listening to this. Hell yeah, you know what man. I mean? Like Ed sounds great. Fucking Matt sounds great. Yeah, it's it's just a weird uh, timing placement of this song. Like if 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 you if you're as big a nerd as right. as I am. Yeah, yeah. Totally. This is like what eighth 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 slot ninth slot in the show. It's really odd but it's such a fucking great song yep absolutely and this goes back to dude they play this every night right so of course it sounds fucking great WMA they they played that 16 times in their lives right and how many you know times I mean? that was with Matt I mean probably yeah, a lot exactly. of them but still it's not very many <laughs> you know I don't think it was I doubt it's been any maybe 16 times, dude. That was probably all 90s with Dave A. I would imagine. Now, they've tagged well, it a bunch, but that's really just Eddie singing. Sure. That's not the same. As with the band jamming. Right. Anyway. And OCD aside, I'm glad they decided to do the little space jammy section here. Yeah, yeah, totally.
It's always great. That song is always great. <laughs> it's so fucking you know what I mean? good. Everyone <clears throat> so kicks good. ass on that song every time. Yeah. Um, I did also want to mention what is fun about some of these. I've. It is good to hear Jeff play songs that where the bass line is so crucial that they never play a lot mm-hmm. anymore like WMA and like the next one rats yeah. because those yeah. are like some stand for me personally as a fan of Jeff some of those bass lines are some of my some of my favorites you know what I mean mm-hmm. um I'm not saying they're the best whatever it's just <laughs> I don't know it's just cool shit you know um so let's listen to Listen to some rats. Yeah, dude. Jeff is Jeff is totally a secret weapon in this. Band. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Every time I remind myself it, to stop and listen to what he's doing at any given moment in any right. given song, I'm like, man, he's sneaking. He's like sneaking in all this shit it's, that just exactly you. You. It's like you don't if notice you it, but if you took it away, you'd be like, right. what? What? Yeah. 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 Totally agreed, man. All right, let's see what we got here. <laughs> I love Eddie, man. I know, man. man. <laughs>
like, even though this is not a great performance of this, I don't mm-hmm. think it's just not great. Uh, it's not bad, but it's good to hear them play an old cut like that that never gets played, and they're all having fun playing this song. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's totally. that kind of makes up for any kind of you know they haven't played this song a bunch together. They're not really totally no, gelled with it. This is a but it's this a lot is of a variety fun. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's stuff like this where the band is just jamming out. Yeah. That on a song we don't get to hear that often, you yeah. know? This is one of my favorite outros of theirs, too. I love that little mm-hmm. Michael Jackson line at the end. Yeah. Kind of re- repeated over and over. So that's pretty cool to get rats. Um, Yeah. And we got, actually, Eddie talks really for the first time, I think, right? This whole set. This is the first time he's stopped to really talk. Um, Yeah. And he does what I think was a very sweet intro or conversation or story about elderly woman. Yeah. um, About Stone, you know what I mean? And his perspective and, 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 and kind of what it's like to to be in a band and trust other people's opinions when you think you've written something that's stupid and shitty and they're like, nah, man, like that's... Anyway, we'll get to it. Here it is. Yeah. Is it too loud for you? We could have them turn it down. <laughs> I was that made me laugh. Yeah. It's such a dad joke. <laughs> there's, there's one that was, uh, we were all staying in the same place when we were, we were making um, this one record. And, and, um, <laughs> Which seemed like a great idea, but what we had spent so many, so much time on the road all together, very compact, that it might have been good to have a little bit of space. But either way, it was like a diamond and, and us getting all crunched together. It, it made us, uh, it beat the fuck out of us, actually. <laughs> but we did get a record out of it, and, and, um, I remember one morning I came up because I was I was staying uh, a little off from where everybody else was staying, and, and Stone heard the song, so I gave him all the credit because he, he said, uh, "What was that you were playing?" I said, "Oh, it's just a little something," and he said, "I think that's good because because I thought it kind of sucked, but it was because it was simple and it was and it was easy and it was kind of straight ahead." But it, it did have a good story, and uh, thanks to Stone, um, we got to play it and record it and all that. He's a man of excellent taste. That's pretty cool, I think. Giving props to Mr. Stone Gossard. Yeah. Because um, he's such a great fucking songwriter. He does have great taste. You know what I mean? I think so anyway. Now, here's what's funny is 
you know, I went on my little comparison rant earlier, but mm. the next three, which include two songs that I don't really revisit very often, uh, mm. I think the next three are examples of there's moments in each of these songs where I would actually say that I would love to have heard these three songs. Well, I'll do them one at a time. Elderly with Matt, I love. I like it better than the record. I think he fits really? that kind of like. I remember even thinking at the time, um, you know, there's like little things from each era that just don't end up aging well. You know what I mean? Like, just like clothes mm -hmm. don't. Like, you look at how you might have dressed in the 80s and you're just like, Jesus Christ, that was a little <laughs> over the top, right? <laughs> Um, there's always little things like that. And I think while Dave A was so known for his, um, symbol work, I know that's one of the big things that I took from kind of studying how he played and stuff. Uh, sometimes it went a little, it was like, I think in retrospect, you would may, maybe say, oh, that was a little bit much. Maybe just kind of yeah. sit back and Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers this shit. <clears throat> and, I, and I feel like this is one of those examples and Ma that's what Matt's doing. And I really like his take on it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here is Elderly Woman. One, two, three, four, two. I seem to recognize your face. A wanting familiar, yet I can't seem to place it. Can I find a candle of thought to light? It's just such a nice song. You know, it's like something your mother could listen to. It's just yeah, it's classic. Yeah. This kind of this song is kind of an automatic classic. not just classic Pearl Jam song, but just kind of a classic song. Yeah. I like those little things they've added. Those two hits. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great crowd moment. Yeah, for sure. Another weird placement for this song. Right. It's, it's usually an opener. Opener, yeah.
Good shit, man. This is a good yeah. song with a good yeah. band. <laughs> End of story. Yeah. Not much else to say about that, I don't think. Um, yeah, let's move on to Leash. All right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it's well documented us talking about this song, but yeah. what a great fucking live song, man! It it really is. Uh, when we first started the show, I really didn't like this song. Me too, man. <laughs> I've really changed but, man, my thoughts. The last year, man, it just totally grew on me. Absolutely agreed. At this point, Eddie's gone into the crowd. Yeah. It's not like he was having some trouble with this song anyway. It's high up there, he, man. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, he's not just the front row. He's like, yeah, he's out rows there, man. into the crowd. Yeah. Which he doesn't, he rarely does that. It's pretty cool. He put he, someone gave him sunglasses yeah, and saw put him it. on, yeah. and then gave him back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, He's just some having of my fun. Sweat. He doesn't. He. This is. <laughs> I'm never washing these sunglasses ever. <laughs> so funny i just i don't know i just remembered this when i the first however many times i heard this song i thought he was saying denied not like not delight <laughs> and i was like right. yeah i was a kid i was like yeah fuck them yeah, yeah we're getting denied man fuck them right. and then i realized he was saying delight <laughs> and i was like oh <laughs> yeah that that's too. not metal <laughs> that, yeah um yeah that's a good live song man Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Now, okay. This one was one that... Getting to Indifference. Very, very, very special song to me. And I don't know. I was a little apprehensive when we got to this, thinking maybe Mm -hmm. it wouldn't be great. But I fucking love it. So good. And Matt's drum part that he's added, that little he's taken the snares off his uh, turned the snares off on his snare drum, so it's just yeah. like a tenor drum without the snares. And he's doing that little. It's so fucking sick. I love it. <laughs> Let's see here. Dude, that's pretty. That's a yeah. pretty badass drum part. That's like smoky jazz. I'm, I'm on the record. Yeah, smoky jazz club. One one swinging like light bulb hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, a lot of smoke in the air. Mm-hmm. Everyone's Dusty. drinking a brown liquor. There's no vodka. There's no tequila. You know what I'm saying? It's like that '50s. That's what this kind of feels like with that drum part. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's exactly what you were thinking, right? That ridiculous <laughs> thinking, yeah, thing I that I just it. imagined up in my brain. 
I could see it. You described it perfectly. Thanks. Oh, Mike's playing with like a violin bow. Yeah, he's got the Jimmy Page. Yeah, the yeah. cello bow. Fucked up the lyric. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Which I was just thinking, like, how fucking badass these lyrics are. Right. I mean, it, this song's amazing. See, and that's another example. Like, I love that Matt made an ending to that song with that that right. kind of like tribal drum part at the end. You know? Yeah. I love that kind of shit. <sighs> Man, I love that song. I just had to listen to that one. I think. Yeah. Not talk too much. But again, I mean, I know this is such a. I mean, for all Pearl Jam fans, uh, but such a. The one where he uh, where he does this song with Ben Harper mm -hmm. is a great example. It's of MSG. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, it's so good. I mean, I already, it's weird. Like Ben Harper is one of those people. Like I don't, I don't own like his music and whatever, but mm -hmm. I like him a lot. Yeah. You know. Woo! That's quite a show, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is up there. With, with their great performances, yep. you know, yeah. There's a couple, couple in there, and we talked about it, you know. But overall, it's just it's incredible to hear these twelve songs played like that. Absolutely, they still got it. Mm hmm. Well, you ready to get the fuck out of here? Yeah, dude. What's that counter at? Five hours. <laughs> Oh my God, we're at 
two hundred and fifty something minutes. Yeah, it's just just over four. Hours. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we won't be putting all of that content out, but yes, we right. have been talking well, for a mm-hmm. while. Yeah, I'll tag, just throw all of our random want. shit at the end. I'll give you guys forty five <laughs> yes. minutes of random just bullshit <laughs> at the end. Just real, SPT, just real talk. Yeah, real drivel. Just <laughs> one guy jacked up on Red Bull, the other guy just egging him on, from what I remember correctly. Do we need to apologize for any technical difficulties if if there's something you can't fix? No. Okay. No? Fuck them? Yeah, that's what I said. I said <laughs> fuck them. That's what I heard. I'm not apologizing. I'm done with you, Brad B. <laughs> well, we made 114 episodes. It was a good run. Yeah. Well. No, we'll be back next week. Um, if you'd like mm-hmm. to email us, please do. We love getting your emails. Um, life gets crazy sometimes, but we try our best to respond or read them on the air. So uh, the email address is singlepodcasttheory at gmail, gmail.com. Say hey on social media. Uh, if you'd like to support the hey. show, patreon.com, P A T R E O N dot com slash single podcast theory. Until next week, I'm Brad Lyons. And I'm Brad Blazek saying, I'll keep taking punches till their will grows tired. You almost fucked that one up, man. I almost did. I had a look over at my <laughs> notes. <laughs> All right, peace. Should I do it again? I'm Brett. What? What? Huh? No, well, right. I'm sorry, dude. Bye. I can't. I, I, there's a delay. Why? Yeah, I know. You're oh, all I fucked can't, up. I can't hear you. Uh, <clears throat> Bye. I love you. Ooh, you made the move that time. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh shit. Mark, yeah.